So as we move on, we want to look at nucleic acid sequencing because it's really the start of DNA technology and how we can utilize the genetic code and manipulate the genetic code to help in biomedical sciences, to help in industry, etc. So to begin, nucleic acid sequencing, by knowing the order of those bases, um, it can help us to deduce amino acid sequences because from the DNA we transcribe our RNA and then translate our proteins. By knowing the sequence we can also determine gene regulation, so how genes are turned on or how they're turned off and how they're expressed in cells. We can help to diagnose disease. I'm sure many of you are familiar with the BRCA1 test. Um, the movie star Angelina Jolie made that popular last year when she came out with um, a public statement saying that she was diagnosed, or not diagnosed, I'm sorry, but um, her BRCA1 gene was uh, mutated. And lastly, by knowing nucleic acid sequences, we can look at phylogenetic relationships between species and we can see how similar their nucleic acid sequences are or how different. Uh, for instance, uh, human and chimpanzees share almost 99% of their DNA. Your textbook lists for you some genetic diseases with carrier screens. And like I mentioned before, we could even add on here now the BRCA1 and 2 genetic tests that can be done for breast cancer. So to begin with, most sequencing strategies follow these three main steps. Um, genomic DNA is very, very large, so we have to be able to fragment it to cut it down into smaller, more manageable pieces to sequence. We then have to determine the sequence of the residues in each of those fragments that we create. And most of the time, we have to then align fragments and sort of like a jigsaw puzzle. We have to align and see where in fragments there's overlap so that we can actually start to order the fragments into their sequences. So to begin with step one, we have to be able to cut up the DNA, fragment the DNA. And how we do that is actually by enzymes that we discovered from bacteria. So bacteria can be infected by viruses called bacteriophages. And so to protect themselves from that foreign DNA from the bacteriophage, bacteria um, have what we call endo and exonucleases. So these are enzymes that can distinguish between the bacterium's DNA and foreign DNA. And how the bacteria does that is it actually tags its own DNA as being from like self because it can methylate the DNA and that chemical tag tells these enzymes not to cleave that particular DNA. So these enzymes will go after and they cleave any unmethylated DNA that comes into the bacterium. And so there's two types of these enzymes that can cut the sugar phosphate backbone of a nucleic acid. The first type is called endonucleases, and they cut or cleave the molecule within the polynucleotide strand. And we have exonucleases, where they will cut and remove the terminal residues, or the terminal nucleotides, off the strand. And what's interesting about these enzymes is more often than not, they recognize and cut uh, nucleic acids that are um, palindromes. So a palindrome is a word that is read or spelled out um, the same way forwards and backwards. And they also, the endonucleases or exonucleases, they can cause different types of symmetry in the cuts. And so they have what we call blunt or sticky ends. So there's over 4,000 restriction enzymes that we know of, and they recognize about 270 different types of recognition sites or sequences within the genome. And so what's important to know is that these enzymes are very, very specific. They search out within the DNA, and they only cut between particular base pairs.
And so here we can see examples of the different types of cuts we can have. So here's an example of a palindrome. If you read this sequence in the five prime to three prime direction on both strands, you can see G, G, A, 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 T, 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 C, C. So the forward reading is going to be the same in both directions. So here is a blunt cut. It's asymmetrical. Or I'm sorry, not a blunt cut. It's um, a sticky ends cut. It's asymmetrical. And so if you look at if this DNA were to come apart, it creates what we call sticky ends. We have these overhangs on each of the DNA strands. We can also have blunt cuts. A blunt cut does not leave a sticky end. And moving forward, what you're going to see is we can cut um, DNA using these different types of cuts and it'll allow us to manipulate these strands later. Once we cut strands of DNA or once we sequence them we have to be able to separate out all of the fragments and so we can use gel electrophoresis to do this. I'm sure many of you are familiar with the concept of gel electrophoresis. So what happens is we can get our sample that's going to have our nucleic acid in it and we run it through an agarose gel or a polyacrylamide gel. And so these gels are made of molecules that um, sort the fragments based on size. And so if we look, here you can see the gel is porous, but it's like a maze that these molecules have to move through. And so large molecules are not going to move very far. Medium-sized molecules are going to travel um, further down in the gel and the smallest molecules will be able to travel the quickest and they will move through distance wise furthest in the gel. And because DNA is a negative molecule we have an electrical charge set up in our gel apparatus. So the negative DNA will actually run towards this positive anode and so it will physically pull it through uh, the gel. When we're done then, here's a restriction digest. So across the top of this figure, A through I, we've used different types of restriction enzymes on the same fragment of DNA. And you can see how the different enzymes have cut the DNA into different sizes because they're all going to be cutting between different base pairs on the primary sequence of that DNA molecule.